getting ready for an early morning departure on board this NATO surveillance aircraft. With that dome, it can see hundreds of kilometers into the distance and watch what the Russians are doing in and around Ukraine on the land, sea and air. It's taken us months to get this access. Come and join us. As the sun comes up, the surveillance plane lifts off from its base in Germany on what will be a minimum 12-hour mission. They're bound to the very edge of NATO airspace, flying high above Poland, just outside Ukraine's war zone. The massive radar and surveillance tools are now switched on. Obviously, in Crimea, there is really, really a lot of activity. Much on this AWACS plane, or Airborne Warning and Command, is secret. We can't show it. We can't even tell you the last name of the surveillance operator, Portuguese Sergeant Joa. Basically, everything that we are able to detect, uh, we obviously share it with your NATO allies. What no one on this plane can officially say, but is widely known, is that some of those allies share this intelligence in real time with the Ukrainians, allowing them to respond quickly to incoming threats. Uh, this is what they call a sanitized version of this screen. It doesn't show everything that, um, that this aircraft can see. But we are told that it can do things like Russian fighter jets, certainly, but even Russian missiles, Russian drones, ships that might be out there, they can identify which ship using the powerful surveillance suite that is on board this aircraft, and of course feed all that information, all that intelligence in real time to the ground. On camera, none of the crew can say exactly what they're detecting right now. The information relayed by an instant data link, nor will they describe specific events on the ground. They don't want the Russians to know what they know, particularly incidents where their surveillance was used by the Ukrainians. But off camera, some describe watching Russian radar signatures disappear after being engaged by Ukrainian jets and missiles. Early warnings, too, of incoming bombing or missile raids, watching Russian troop movements and the exact position of Russian warships at sea. Senior Master Sergeant Alyssa is on the electronic front line, watching Russian positions, alerting others when Russian planes fly into Ukraine, and then seeing the response. When we watch the Ukrainian fighters taking off and protecting their airspace and going after Russian fighters, that was neat. Probably more than neat. It was. It was cool. They're fighting back, and they're taking control of the country they love, and they're pushing the Russians out. An alarm sounds unexpectedly in flight, only a simulation, but the crew treats it as real, a drill in the event of fire on board. These are tense times especially as Russia rattles the nuclear saber, inviting a far more direct military engagement by NATO. An hour later, on the flight deck, pilots are engaging in a delicate airborne dance, a mid-flight refueling. Up there is a U.S. Air Force tanker, a gas station in the sky. Carefully, the NATO plane edges up as a boom pole is extended from the tanker. For nearly half an hour, the gas is pumped. The pilots of both planes synchronized in their movements. After it's done, we catch up with the aircraft commander, an American, Major Wayne. After years of such work, including in war zones, he says this mission is something else. The big difference was uh, the adversary. So in the Middle East, they didn't have capable um, a capable Air Force threat uh, that we were so concerned about, uh, whereas here uh, there is the possibility of a much greater threat uh, in the air.
Russia doesn't particularly like this sharing of information, of intelligence, powerful intelligence with the Ukrainians. And so periodically they launch their own fighter jets, scramble them at this one. Uh, and this aircraft sometimes has to take evasive action. It's not like they're shooting at one another, but does give you a sense of how NATO does have involvement, really, in the Ukrainian conflict. This aircraft is one of 14 in NATO's surveillance fleet, and along with similar planes operated directly by allies, they maintain a near constant watch of Ukraine's airspace. That crew comes from a multitude of NATO nations, a multi-year posting from their home countries. Uh, the person flying the plane right now is from Belgium, and back there, a Canadian. This is Captain Colin Wiley. As surveillance controller, he confirms and rapidly communicates inbound threats. Seeing things like, oh, disappearing at a low level, what does that mean? Probably dropping bombs, right? They can't necessarily prevent them. That is the job of the Ukrainians. It is his first experience where all his training is playing out in reality on the screen in front of him. I wake up in the morning from my bed, <laughs> fly uh, orbits over here on the eastern flank, doing the job, and then I go back and sleep in my own bed at night, which is crazy for me, it's a crazy experience, and it also makes me think about those who are you know, involved in it, who don't get to go to you know, a safe warm bed at the end of the day, it doesn't end for them. As the AWACS turns back to its base, another like it is already in the sky, taking up its station near the conflict, feeding a constant stream of intelligence as war rages in Europe. So Dave, it's a really interesting look inside one of those. And, and I know that so much about the planes and so much about their mission remains secret, but. But can you give us a sense of what actually happens with the data? Yeah, absolutely. So there's the official and unofficial. Uh, the official is that it gets transmitted very quickly down to an operations center on the ground. Unofficially, some of the allies are then sharing it with the Ukrainians who have their own surveillance and radar on the ground. And they layer all of that information, one on top of the other, to give them a big picture of what's happening on the battlefield, not just in the moment, like right now, but what the Russians might be planning next. So AWACS have been used in all sorts of conflicts for a very long time, but, but what makes this one especially different? Well, certainly the size of it. This is a big conflict, but also the potential for danger. You know, it's not lost on those who are up in that plane. What if they're there when a nuclear device is used on the ground? What happens then? What if biological and chemical weapons are introduced, say, by the Russians, and they see that missile launch? There's also the potential for danger to them, you know, whether accidental or otherwise. What happens if they get targeted by a Russian plane while they're in the sky? And then, of course, you see what happens. NATO gets pulled in much more deeply than it is right now, and we're into a very, very big war. Well, really appreciate your look there. Thank you. Thank you.